the jump statement can be used to come out of program blocks, conditional statements, or the iteration structures. It is also called unconditional control structure because it can be used in any part of the program without checking for any condition. We are covering four common jump statements. Break, continue, go to, and return. Let's start with the first one. The break statement. Break is an unconditional control statement that is used to terminate from a program block. It forces termination of a loop or the switch structure. It's best understood with the help of a program. So here I have program 20. Let's write a program to accept multiples of 10, like 10, 120, 700, or similar. Exit from the program as soon as the entered number is not a multiple of 10. I hope it makes sense. Here is the program code. Try to understand the control flow by yourself. Just two points. On line 6, it means, while n is true, or greater than 0, execute the statements. On line 9 it means, if remainder of n divided by 10 is true, or greater than 0, then enter this block. Check the output. The continue statement. Continue is an unconditional control statement that skips rest of the instructions within a loop and forces the next iteration. We will check its application in a simple program. Using any loop and the continue statement, print all numbers from 10 to 1 except 8, 5, and 2. You can try your own program logic. I have here the code for you. And this is the output. Once again, it's for you to track down how the program works. Remember that, what is of most significance here, is the for loop header. Then the if block, with continue statement. And finally, the modifier n, minus minus. Also note that cout, is not part of the if block. So, happy tracking. The go to statement. Go to is an unconditional control statement that can be used to shift the control from a specified point within a program code to any other point marked by a label. The destination point identified by the label is used as an argument with go to statement. A label is a valid identifier that is declared by label name and a colon symbol. Syntax is go to label. For example, go to point one. Let's see how go to works in a program that prints first n even numbers. In this program, I will go by the logic that all even numbers when divided by 2, should give a remainder equals 0. So I check each number from 0 to n, and print the even numbers. Here is the program code. I save this program as 22.cpp. I declare integer variables, n, and i. The user is then prompted to enter any integer number. I enter 5. It is sent to variable n. The next program instruction prints on screen the message, even numbers from 0 to 5 are. Control is next on line 8. It's the label named point 1. It is not an instruction. So control goes to next line. The if condition. It checks if i mode 2 equals 0. That is, if i divided by 2 gives a remainder 0. Here, i is blank. And that means, C++ automatically assigns i equals 0. So, 0 divided by 2 gives remainder 0. And hence, value in i, or 0, is our first even number. Program control shifts to the cout statement, and 0 is printed on output screen. The control flow then shifts to i++. Value of memory location i is increased by 1. i becomes 1. The control then proceeds to if statement which checks if n is greater than or equal to i. Here, n is 5, and i is 1. So n is greater than i, control enters this if block, and executes statement, go to point 1. Program control now jumps to the label marked point 1, on line 8. It's not an executable statement. So the control once again repeats the first if condition. It checks if i, or 1, divided by 2 is 0. 1 divided by 2 gives remainder 1, not 0. So, control doesn't enter this if block. It shifts to next statement. That is, i++. 1 is added to i, and i becomes 2. Again it checks if n is greater than or equal to i. It is. 
so control jumps to label point 1. Then on to if condition. This time, 2 mode 2 is 0. C out is executed. And 2 is printed on screen. Then 2 is plus plus. I becomes 3. N is less than I. So go to works. Control jumps. 3 mode 2 is 1, not 0. Hence C out doesn't execute. I or 3 is plus plus. I becomes 4. N or 5 is greater than I. Once again go to works. Control jumps up. This time, 4 mode 2 is 0. C out works, and 4 is printed on screen. I plus plus turns 4 to 5. This time, in the if condition, n or 5 is equals i or 5. So once again, the control jumps to label named point 1. i mode 2 or 5 mode 2 is not equal to 0. Hence, C out doesn't work. I plus plus is executed. I become 6. Now it's checked if n is greater than or equal to i. n is 5 and i is 6. That means n is neither greater than or equal to i and so control doesn't execute this if block. It goes to next line which is the end of program. We now have printed on the screen all even numbers from 0 to 5. Next is the return statement. Return is an unconditional control statement used in a function to terminate the execution of code within that function and then return back to its origin or the calling function. Remember that C++ programs start with the main function and may end with a return statement. A function can have any number of return statements. Syntax is return value. Return zero is an example. Please refer to chapter three, program named 1.cpp where we use the return zero statement. We will learn more on functions in the upcoming chapters. We will now write a few quick simple programs to wrap up whatever we learned so far. Let's first write a program to print the first n multiples of four. It's our program number 23. This is the program code. And here is the output. The user has asked for five multiples of the number four. So the program prints it. Next is the program to print the factorial of a number. Note that the factorial of a positive integer number is the multiplication of all its numbers starting from 1 to that number. For example, factorial of 3 is 1 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3. And the result is 6. Similarly factorial of 4 is 1 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 4. And that is 24. And factorial of 5 is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. And the result is 120. Here is the program code. And this is the output. Program 25. Requirement is to check a prime number without any iteration statement. Note that a prime number is fully divisible only by 1 and the number itself. For example, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23 are all prime numbers. Also note that a prime number cannot be negative number 0 or 1 and that the first prime number is 2. In this program, it is hinted to use the goto statement. In the next program, we will be writing the same program without goto statement. Logic is to divide any given number first by 2 then up to half that number. And if no number fully divides it, then that number is prime. This is how the output would look like. We are prompted to enter a number. I enter 19. Our program does the computations, and the result is printed on screen. It says, 19 is a prime number. I then once again run the program. This time I enter minus 10. System prompts to enter another number. I now enter 0. Again, the system prompts to enter another number. I enter 1. Once again I am prompted to enter another number. I enter number 24. Now it says, 24 is not a prime number. Try playing around with how the program code works. Let's next move to program 26. 
requirement is to print all prime numbers within n natural numbers. Here is the code. And this is the output. The user is prompted to enter a number. The user enters 15. Our program computes the result. It prints all prime numbers between 0 and 15. Carefully take a step-by-step -step review of the for loop block. On line 17, we have the if block, which plays a very important role. Remember that the condition if i mode j means true or 1. It simply instructs that if i divided by j gives the remainder 1, then do something. On line 17, note that we have used the condition if not i mode j, and this should mean false or 0. Try tracking the program flow. So with this, we come to an end of chapter 9. Meet you in the next session. Until then, do your best, and be cheerful. Have a nice time.